hey everyone welcome to my youtube channel so i am going to deliver the topic that is anti-icing and de-icing so these are the aircraft and engine ice protection systems that are generally of two designs either they remove ice after it has formed or uh, they prevent it from forming anti-icing systems are designed for activation before the aircraft enters icing conditions to prevent the formation of ice. An anti-icing system is basically the application of chemicals that not only de-ice but also remain on a surface and continue to delay the reformation of ice for a certain period of time or prevent adhesion of ice to make mechanical removal easier. De-icing is the reactive application of ice control products to driving or walking surfaces to melt existing snow and ice. And crews perform de-icing after snow removal operations to melt remaining snow and ice. And de-icing is basically the process of removing uh, uh, snow, ice or frost from a surface. And uh, de-icing solution is a mixture of propylene, glycol and water heated to around 150 degrees and sprayed under pressure to the wings of an aircraft. It's good for around 22 minutes. So here are the five types of de-icing equipment. Pneumatic de-icing boots, fluid de-icing, bleed air, electrothermal, electromechanical. Pneumatic boot is usually made of layers of rubber or other elastomers with one or more air chambers between the layers. If multiple chambers are used, so they are typically shaped as strips aligned with the long direction of the boat. Here you can see in the picture of the pneumatic de-icing boots. It is typically placed on the leading edge of an aircraft's wings and stabilizers. The chambers are rapidly inflated and deflated either simultaneously or in a pattern of specific chambers only. So the rapid change in uh, shape of the boot is designed to break the adhesive force between the ice and the rubber and allow the ice to be carried away by the air flowing past the wings. Next is fluid de-icing. Fluid de-icing, uh, another name of the fluid de-icing system is the weeping wing, running wet or evaporative system. These systems use a de-icing fluid typically based on um, ethylene glycol or isopropyl alcohol to prevent ice forming and to break up accumulated ice on critical surfaces of an aircraft. Third one is bleed air. Bleed air systems are used by most large aircraft with jet engines or turboprops. Hot air uh, is bled off one or more engines compressor sections into tubes routed through wings, tail surfaces and um, engine inlets and spent air is exhausted through holes in the wings undersides. Fourth one is the electrothermal um, de-icing equipment. Uh, the Boeing 787 Dreamliner uses electrothermal ice protection. In this case the heating coils are embedded within the composite wing structure. Boeing claims the system uses half the energy of engine fed bleed air systems and uh, reduces drag and noise and the fifth one is the electromechanical uh, de-icing equipment so electromechanical expulsion de-icing uh, uses a uh, percussive force initiated by actuators inside the structure which induce a shock wave in the surface to be cleared and um, hybrid systems have also been developed that combine the electromechanical expulsion de-icing systems with heating elements where a heater uh, prevents ice accumulation on the leading edge of the airfoil and the electromechanical expulsion de-icing system removes. Turbulence, volcanic conditions, and this, the most common one, rain. Welcome everybody to ATA Chapter 30, Ice and Rain Protection. One of the most intricate and diverse chapters touches every part of the aircraft. It is a vital component for safety of flight. Aircraft has a variety.
variety of safety features when it comes to ice and rain, especially at the altitudes they fly. Let's begin with engine anti-ice and wing anti-ice. Most aircraft will utilize bleed air, either taken from the APU or the engine itself. Pilots can activate or deactivate at will, but majority of the time this is an automatic function. So when we're talking about engines, let's go take a look. Post cowling or the inlet cowling, uh, the lip of the engine basically, it takes the brunt force of all that cold air. It's going to take bleed air from the engine compressor and push it into this area. It's going to warm it up and prevent ice prevention or buildup. But it needs an exit. You're going to need vent holes just like this. It'll dump overboard. Same thing for the leading edge. The majority of modern jetliners will heat up the outboard leading edge wings. Also have pitot tubes and static port. These get heated as well. Angle of attack sensors and TATs, total air temperature sensors. A quick diagram for you. It shows all the things that are heated. Not to forget the drain mast as well. You saw the last video. These don't want to get iced up. And we as maintenance check on these all the time. Make sure everything is in proper working order. Last but not least, window heat. I saw this cool effect the other day. The aircraft was on ground, but the window heat was active because it's on automatic mode. It was literally evaporating the water because it was raining at the time. Not only does it protect from icing up the windshield, it also makes the windshield a little bit pliable just in case of a bird strike. Yeah, that's right. It will soften the blow. Those windows flex. Just a reminder, there's a redundancy system to these computers. If one fails, you have a backup computer that will take over. As well as for the heat probes, there's also a backup heat probe. Isn't redundancy wonderful? Oh, and here's a little fun one for you. On Rolls-Royce engines, on the spinner, there's a little rubber tip. So now I'm going to show you the video that shows that uh, how the de-icing equipments are uh, used on the aircraft. Thank you, everyone. So that's all from my side. If you have any questions, then you can ask me in the comment section.